um, all about PRS Foundation. Excellent. I will come with some more PRS Foundation. Do, but I'll, I'll do a quick thing because Wesley's so modest and they're also modest in the team that we all say themselves. I believe these are like the most game changing organisation in the in terms of support talent, uh, independent talent, talent you've got signed to major labels or publishers. Um, and they take the support talent from very early stages to like kind of next level stage, right? So please do pay attention and make sure you actually get Wesley's details because he's one of only a couple of years and he does his email back in the world. So, Awesome. Thanks, Yao. Hello, everybody. I'm Wesley. I'm a Grants and Programs Manager at PRS Foundation. Um, so today I'm going to run through a little presentation of what we do and what we offer and who we are. It will be apparent very quickly that there's quite a lot of different grant schemes and it can be a bit confusing. So I am sticking around afterwards. If you have any, if you have any questions during it, please pipe up, but I will be around afterwards so we can talk specifically about what you do and I can point you in the right direction if that makes sense as well. Um, so I'm going to run through a presentation and then maybe I will run through a form, one of our application forms, just because one of the hardest parts of getting people to apply is the idea of having to do a form and that can seem quite daunting I think but ours are quite straightforward especially compared to a lot of other funders and if I run through it and just highlight what we're looking for hopefully that will demystify it a bit and you'll be more likely to apply. Um, thanks to Yao for bigging us up there. Um, I think a good example of, of what he was talking about there is we have different grant schemes for different levels of career. Um, you may have seen recently Ezra Collective just won the Mercury Prize the other night. So we funded them from our very early career schemes, which was the Steve Reed Innovation Jazz Fund and early mentoring scheme a long time ago, then for our open fund and then for our international showcase fund and finally our momentum scheme. So that kind of leveling up progression for our grant schemes is what can get an artist to that point whilst remaining independent, which is very, very important. So we are the UK's leading charitable funder of new music and talent development. Um, it was founded about 21 years ago by PRS for Music, and they are still our main donor. As part of their donation, we are in their office. We work very closely with them, but we are an independent charity and separate organization. So if you're just starting out and it's still early career for you and you're not a member of PRS, you can still apply to our grants. You just can't apply if you're a member of another collection society from around the world, like Gamer, which Sam mentioned. Um, yeah, we have a whole host of different grant schemes, and lots of our funds are supported specifically by different organizations so we're funded also by the arts councils around the uk directly from government british council musicians union and also from industry people like youtube beggars group and lots of other organizations we work very closely with bbc as well um, generally we give out about 400 five to 500 grants a year um, and they all revolve around the performance, promotion, and creation of new music. And those grants vary from 500 pounds up to 25,000 pounds. And we split them between half goes to music creators and half goes to organizations. So we've previously funded this organization and, and many others. Um, and we are a very small team for a funder. Um, and we're a very dedicated team. And although we're a small team, we're a broad church and each person in the team has specific understanding of different areas. And that's really important to how we work, which I'll talk about in a little while as well. Generally, the goal of what we do as an organization is to try and help people build a long-term sustainable career in music that is no longer reliant on funding. So the idea is that you shouldn't need this forever. You should get to the point where you're earning enough that you can be a sustainable musician. It's hard to get there without investment, so that's what we do. So across pretty much all of our grant schemes, we have three main priorities. One is to support the creation and performance of outstanding new music. So generally, when you apply to us, 50% of the score is just the music that you give us. We're just judging it on that, and that, that can be the potential of the music as well. Um, and then to enable the UK's most talented music creators to realise their potential, a lot of what we do is around breaking down barriers and providing access to people who need help and support. Um, so that's a very important aspect of what we do. And then to reach audiences. So we want to know how the music or the, the tour that you're going on, how is that going to get out into the world? How are people going to know about it? What's your marketing and PR plan? And that generally runs across all of our grant schemes. So as I mentioned, we split them into two groups, one for organizations, one for music creators. We have our open fund, which is up to £10,000 for organizations, and the Talent Development Partner Network, which is a group of organizations that we lean on who are experts in their genre and field from all over the UK. There's 46 at the moment. We are changing our organization's funding for next year, but that might not be relevant here. 
And then we have a new music biennial thing, which is a show we do once every three years um, around experimental music. So our funding for music creators, as you can see, is split into steps. So we have some early career support. Um, one is Glastonbury Emerging Talent, where we find some people and then eventually someone will play at Glastonbury for a, a process. We're also about to be launching a program with BBC introducing around working with BBC One Extra and the Asian Network, specifically targeting and providing support for artists of those genres and areas. And then we have our All Careers Levels, which is the open fund for music creators and women make music. Those are up to £5,000. And then you go on to our Next Steps Fund, which is a PPL Momentum Fund, which is primarily funded by PPL. The Hitmaker Fund, which is for behind the scenes producers and songwriters only. So if you're a producer, that grant is for you. And then the Composers Fund, which is for the classical world. So the, that Next Steps is kind of split into those different areas because you need specific support at that time. And then we have our International Showcase Fund, which is for any industry facing showcase around the world. And there's plenty of them to choose from. Things like South by Southwest or Reaper Barn or Africa Rising or New School Rules. There's loads of them, Lipfest in Taiwan. Like, as long as it's an industry facing showcase and you've been invited to play, you can apply for us to the cost of visas, accommodation, and flights to get there. Cool. So what we can fund and what we can support is what we look to fund is the creation of new music. So that can include your time to create music. So you can say, I need, if you're working, you need to take time out to write your record. That's an eligible cost you can ask us for. Um, touring and performance, any kind of live programming. If you're an organization commissioning people, you can apply for that. Development time, if you're developing a tour, if you're developing a live show, if you're invited on a residency. As I mentioned, our third priority, which was about reaching audiences, we do want to see a decent marketing and promo plan, or at least an idea of who you're reaching, how you're going to reach them, how it's going to benefit you. But we can't just fund that. There has to be some form of creation or performance of music as well. So if, if you've already made your record and you just want to hire a PR for 5K, we're not going to fund that. But if you want us to pay for the mixing and the mastering to make it a better product, then that's the kind of thing we want to support. Um, and then, of course, international development as well. So the main one, and this is the form that I'll go through in a minute, because um, I think this is probably the best place to start for most people, is the Open Fund for Music Creators. That's so up to £5,000. It's an all-genre all fund, all career stages. As long as it's a significant development, so you've got a, an opportunity that you need to apply for that's going to benefit you, then you can apply for that. We have three deadlines per year. Obviously, there is a form that you have to do, but you can also apply by video if you feel uncomfortable doing a form and you think you would get more across by talking about what you're doing. You're not judged on the production of the video. You can do it on your phone. That's fine. As long as you're answering the same questions and, and that's all outlined in the form, then that's absolutely fine. Um, and you can also just do it audio even if you didn't want to video, film yourself. Um, and I would say... We do tell our assessors to try not to be swayed by unconscious bias when you're doing a video application, but often you can actually get a little bit more of your personality and who you are as an artist in a video. When you're on the assessing side and you're looking through 100 applications, it can get quite dry after 50. So when you get a video and you see someone talking and you can see why they want to do it, that can sometimes stand out. So it's a good way of doing things if you're not sure about doing forms. Um, and there's loads of guidance on our website about what we can and can't fund um, but generally this fund as the name suggests is pretty open as long as it's directly towards the creation or the performance of new music that's fine um, and but you can't we can't fund 100 percent of the costs you have to put some money in that can be prospective costs as well so if you're asking us to help you make an ep then you can say, I expect to sell X amount of this EP and this is what I think I'm going to make and that's fine. You're, you're just showing us the full picture of how that goes. Um, when you do get a grant from us, you generally, if it's over £3,000, you get 50% upfront. If it's less than £3,000, you get 80% upfront and then the rest when it's done and you tell us how it went, which is why it's important that you've got other income coming in to do the project. Otherwise, you might not be able to do it with however much of the grant we're going to give you upfront. Oh. I'm too fast there. So the other grant on that is Women Make Music, which is actually exactly the same form. It's just targeted specifically for women. It started it's probably in its seventh or eighth year now, and it's kind of done its job for us. It's if, if you are a woman thinking about applying, you actually don't really have more chance getting this than the Open Fund for Music Creators. They're really equally as competitive as each other. It's just another opportunity to get a grant. And you can only get one grant per year and you can only apply once per year. So 
If you apply for the Open Fund for Music Creators and you're unsuccessful, we can give you feedback on why. Then you can apply again to Women Make Music with, with a stronger application. But it's essentially the same thing. And as you can see, next deadline is 11th of September. So you need to get a move on if you want to do that one. And then we also have a thing as I'm going through up the levels, basically, of our grant schemes. We have a thing called PPL Momentum Accelerator, which unfortunately is probably not relevant here. But it is we, our top level grant. You have to have quite a lot of infrastructure around you to access that grant. But many places around the UK don't have that infrastructure, so it's hard for artists to get there. So we have an extra grant called the PPL Momentum Accelerator grant. They're currently running in Liverpool, in Yorkshire, and in Wales. We are hoping to launch one in Tees, which is very northeast, and Northern Ireland. And then hopefully around the UK, as we can get more and more support. And I think this region would be a perfect example of somewhere where there's incredible talent, but difficult for people to access this kind of support. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had one here as well. And then we have what I guess is our most well-known it's up to 15,000 pounds. It's the PPR Momentum Music Fund. And so you really have to be at what we call a crucial career tipping point to access this grant. That means the project that you're applying for at this point will mean that if it goes well, you won't need to come back to us for any more funding. So you actually can't come back to us for any more funding, except for international. Anything like the Open Fund Women Make Music that I just talked about is you can't have that anymore. Um, so we'd expect that you'd have at least a manager, maybe a booking agent, record label, other people would be investing in the project. So you can use those other grants to build your career and your profile to get to that point when you can then go for this bigger grant. Um, this is our only grant that can, own, that can support only marketing, actually, um, because you, that might be what you need at that point. Um, but everything else, we need, we need to fund some of that creation and performance of new music. And then the Hitmaker Fund, which is for producers only. So if you're a behind the scenes songwriter, producer, you can apply for that. You, you need to have some works that have been exploited is a terrible word, but it's what is used. Uh, so they've made money, you've had cuts on them, you work with people and you can prove that. And that can be used to fund studio leases, um, paying yourself obviously your time to do that, purchase of equipment if you need to buy some more out, like outboard gear or whatever to make your, your project sound better. And you can also include some international trips if you're invited to do studio sessions with people overseas or anything like that. I think it's five credited works that you'd need, yeah. Yeah, five credited works. And then we have our International Showcase Fund, and there's Queen Mills from Leicester, who we funded uh, to go to South by Southwest last year, and she did very, very well. So anything that is an industry-facing showcase that you have to apply to, it's up to £4,500 for the artists, if you have four artists, and then an extra 1000 for your manager as well. It's really important to have management with you, or at least someone who's doing the industry side of things for you, to do the networking and meet with people and talk with people, because that's where the real value of these showcase events are. So it's anything to do with travel, accommodation, visa costs, per diems, anything like that, just, just to get you there and to get you to do it. And we have lots of support on the ground there um, and advice and guidance before the showcases as well, make sure everyone knows what they're getting into and can hopefully meet with some people who can help them in their career. And so all of those grants kind of form what people talk about the talent pipeline, or we say the talent pipeline, talent development pipeline. So you come in at your early career for something like Lindsay DePaul Prize or Clastonbury Emerging Talent, and then you move into the Open Fund when we make music, then you move to the Momentum Fund, and then potentially ISF. The MIR was a Musicians in Residence program. We don't do that anymore. I should probably take that out. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the, the general thrust of what we do. There are some exceptions. That's not, doesn't have to be that way, for instance, um, there's a, there's a showcase event called New School Rules in the Netherlands, which is focused on hip hop. And you will find many artists will have a good opportunity there before they've had a good opportunity in the UK. So it makes sense for them to go there first and that will raise their profile here. So, so you can mix it up, um, but that's generally the way that, that things go. So if you are looking to apply to us, if you're looking for, for support, go to our incredibly difficult to navigate website and check out all of the different grants, try and understand which one is what. As I say, I can happily talk to anyone about the specifics of what you're doing and point you in the right direction from here. Um, but it's really important you are applying for the correct grant because if you say you're not quite at the level 
for the PPL Momentum grant, there's, you're just not going to get it. So you're wasting your time, really, and you should be applying for another one. Um, check the deadlines, obviously. Generally, when you apply, there's a deadline, and then you'll find out eight weeks after that, eight to ten weeks, um, depending on the grant scheme. That's how long it takes for us to go through the process of assessing and getting all that stuff out. So you need to plan for that. Everything is done through our grant management system, FlexiGrant, which I'll show you after this as well. Um, and we generally do a lot of webinars online. So if you're not signed up to our newsletter, you can do that. And we come to things like this, obviously, to speak to people. But specifically, when a grant opens, we often do a webinar about that particular grant. So that could be quite helpful if you're looking to do that sort of thing. Um, so our application process is when you apply to us, it's assessed by two people, one of us at PRS Foundation. And we have a pool of about 500 plus industry professionals, previous grantees, music people who generally help us assess. And we look at where you are, your genre that you've put in the application, and we send it to someone that we know will understand what you're doing and where you're coming from. So you can be quite specific in how you talk about what you want to do, where you are, the barriers you might be facing, and know that the person reading it is going to know and they're going to understand. It's not going to go, if you're a jazz artist, we're not going to send it to a classical person and expect them to say it's good. Like It goes to someone who knows what you're talking about. And that's the real strength of our assessment process. And then from there, the highest scoring applications of that process is normally we go, try and keep it to around 30 to 35 of the highest scoring. That goes to a panel of a further four industry experts who are based on the, the pool of those genres and regions. And then they decide who does or doesn't get the funding after a, normally about a six hour meeting that we have. So it's quite a rigorous process. In order to be successful, an application would have to have six independent assessments and go through that panel. Um, but it just means that it's fair, it's transparent, everyone's treated the same. Doesn't matter if you know particular people or not, everything is treated at face value and assessed on the quality of the music and the quality of the plan and how much of a difference this is gonna make to your career. That's what we're looking for, essentially. Um, we send decisions out via email, so you'll hear, you're usually on the form at the start of the um, application form, it'll tell you when the decision date is, and then you get that. And then if you do get a grant, make sure you read the offer letter. Rule number one of music is don't sign something you haven't read. And I think because we are giving out money, people often are very quick to sign, but there are some things we're asking for, like we'd like to get a video from people saying thanks for the money, we'd like to get certain information about um, you know, pictures, what you're doing, why you're doing this. So if you, yeah, we often get people decide they don't want to do that, but they've signed the contract. So make sure you do read it. Um, yeah, so that's basically how that process works. Um, when you're thinking about your eligibility, it's really key to think just how, how are you and what you do relevant to this particular grant. Now, some of our grants are genre specific, some of them are region specific, so make sure you are applying for the right one and that you've read the guidelines properly. Um, it's kind of good, I think, to get someone to read it who isn't in music, so they might pick up a question, but I don't know what this means, can you explain that? Because the one thing that applications generally fall down on is detail. And if, if an assessor can ask a question about something you've written, they're going to ask that question and you're not there to answer it. So by making, getting someone else to read it, then they will find those questions and you can plug those gaps. And just try and make sure that there's nothing left in the application that someone can say, I'm not sure how this works, how much, what's that money for? But as long as you've got all the detail, it doesn't really matter how well it is written. We're not looking for that sort of thing. It's, it's about the explaining why you want to do something and where the money's going and that sort of thing. Um, so being concise is fine as well, like bullet pointing your plan is absolutely fine. We don't need a lot of, a lot of information. And I'm, we're already seeing applications that are very, very clearly written by ChatGPT that say all, a lot, they've got all the right words in there, but they don't actually say anything about what's going on. And you can tell straight away, like, okay, this, is, this says, based, the, it lifts words from our website. It's got, okay, it's got all the buzzwords, but I don't actually know what this means. It's not saying anything. So we do know that, so don't do that. Um, and then also cost accordingly. We are giving out money, um, but we do want to make sure it's being spent properly. So if your costs are really high, what that generally means is you'll get less than you ask for. So everyone, again, going back to that thing about the person assessing it will be of the genre, region, whatever that you're in, they will know what things cost. And if, if something's too much, then, then they will, they will um, pick up on that. So it's good for you, I think, to kind of, if you're on any of these social media platforms, follow us, because this is where we announce 
opening, closing of deadlines, any changes, what's going on. Um, and our newsletter is really good for other opportunities as well. So say, you know, like I mentioned, we've previously funded two funky arts before. We might do something with them and that'll go through our um, newsletter or any other organizations we're working with in the area. So that is a very fast run through of all of our funds and how that works. Are there any questions at this point before I dig into the form? Um, when you get one, how long does it last? So it used to be quite strictly a year. We'd say the project needs to be done in a year. Then when the, obviously the pandemic happened, everything got stretched and things ran over. People had to delay, delay, delay. And we actually thought, in hindsight, it's probably better, we're happy to wait for you to do the project as best you can, rather than force you to rush it for a specific deadline. Um, so as long as you keep us in the loop with any changes, we ask for an activity schedule in the application form. As long as you keep us in the loop for any changes, it, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. It's, it's, it's more about making it work as best for you than for us. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, it's form time. So, sorry, so if I was like thinking about applying to help with, say, like marketing and social media, can I include like costs from these No, you can't buy things like that, like equipment. Um, we have up to, for the Open Fund, actually, equipment costs are up to 20%, but that would be music equipment to help you make the music and you'd have to really justify why you need that thing. Like we often have things where like someone had like, could see in their pictures that they had a Dave Smith Prophet 6 synth, which is cool. And they wanted us to help them buy a Prophet 12. It's like how much of a significant difference is this slightly better synth gonna make to your music? That's, so you have to really justify why you need a particular piece of gear if that's what you're asking for. Because um, we, we want to see this really push you creatively. Um, and any kind of marketing has to be along with the creation performance of, of music. So if we're paying for the mixing and mastering, then we can also pay for the marketing as well. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Um, you said if you pay for the mixing and mastering, what if it, so if it was a, if the EP was done, for example, and it was the showcase side of it, do you, would you be able to pay for the, um, the showcase side of it and the, and the marketing. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. As long as we're paying for that creation and performance aspect, yeah. And, and we want to see how you're going to market it as well, yeah. so you're going to have to, but we just can't just fund that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, paying for any of the cost of hiring the place, if you're using any support bands, making sure they're paid, all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Marketing. Cool. So, this is our incredible grant management system. Um, oh, sorry, actually, um, should, I jumped over a few things that weren't in the presentation. We also have two other programs that we run. Um, one is called Key Change, which is a gender equity program that was started about six years ago that is, um, was previously funded by Creative Europe that we started. Unfortunately, had to hand it over to a German partner because of Brexit, um, but we are still very much involved. Um, and that is for women, not just music creators, but also industry professionals as well. Um, so you can apply to that and it's like a mentoring and upskilling masterclass kind of program that runs for over, about a year. And we also have a program called Power Up, which Yal manages, so you can talk to him about that. <laughs> and that is uh, tackling anti-black racism in the music industry. And it's a similar model where it's for industry professionals and music creators as well. Um, but those are quite high level um, programs that sit outside of our grant scheme. So generally you can only hold one grant at a time. So if you have an open fund grant, we're not going to fund you for another grant until that's done. Power up and key change, we kind of keep separately because they're run kind of separately than, than our things, you know, Yao's out there on his own doing the thing. Cool. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, this is uh, what you will see when you start an application form with us. Um, so I just want to run through it to try and make sure that people aren't put off doing this. This eligibility quiz kind of gives you all of the information that you need to make sure that you're applying for the right grant scheme. I do feel like sometimes, because if you, if you select the wrong answer, it's going to tell you that you can't apply. And I feel like sometimes people just find the right answer without actually reading what it asks for. So, because they'll say a particular answer, and then in the form they do the exact opposite. So this isn't like, 
a waste of time. It's really important that you read this and understand it to make sure that you are applying for the right scheme. So links to those, obviously. You generally, you have to have a track record of 18 months of making music to apply to any of our grants. Um, that just means you've been, you know, releasing, playing shows, some kind of evidence that you've been around for a bit longer. Our grants are not really very entry level. There's other organizations like Youth Music who do lots of great work funding organizations to get people to a point where they can then come into our, to our level funding. Um, so you do need to have some sort of track record. Do you have a registered home address in the UK? We are a UK wide funder, so we can only fund people based in the UK. And also for this particular fund, the activity has to be based in the UK as well. And there's this equipment thing. So 20% of the costs can be equipment, but as I mentioned, you, you really do need to justify why you need it. It's not a priority for us, but we can support it if you make a strong enough case. We can't support um, formal education, things like that. And then this is the important one as well. So are you seeking projects that happens before the 5th of December? So that's the decision date for this particular round. So that's when you'll hear back if you've been successful or not. And that's when all of the activity in this application form has to start from. We, sorry? Yeah, sorry, this is the open fund, yeah. So um, we have a little activity plan, which I'll get to in a minute as well in the form. If there's anything in that plan that's before this date, we won't fund that, or it might even be a completely ineligible application. And that does happen, and this is what I mean by I don't think people read it, they just look for the right answer. Because if, if you, yeah, if it's before that date, we legally we can't support that because um, we can't fund retrospective costs. So if, um, if your project started, so I think I mentioned it before, but the EPs recorded the start, they put the actual thing that you detained for, so the, the short tapes. Yeah. Was after the, that day. That's okay or yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the project itself can have already started, but the parts that you're asking us to fund have to be in the future. And in that activity section, you can write in the narrative of the application that the project started, you want, now you want, say, yeah, I've recorded it, I was ready, now I want it mixed and mastered. Everything in that activity plan should start from what you're asking us to support, not, not backwards. Every, there's one question, one main question, which is about track record. That should really be the only thing that is past tense. Everything else is what you're going forward to do. Um, so again, you can only apply once per year, obviously. So there you go. That's to help us keep numbers down so we can manage the process. You can't have it if you've had momentum before. Has to be about the creation and performance of new music. We can't fund the manufacture of CDs and vinyl, things like that. <clears throat> You can't fund 100% marketing costs, as I mentioned. So you don't have to be a member of PRS, but you should be in a position to join. And, and obviously, as, as you go up the levels of grants, say you're at the PPL Momentum Music Fund level, we would expect you to be a member at that point, because if you're not, you're missing out on a lot of money. And, and that's not helping you build a sustainable career. Um, and generally, if you are not a member and you apply to us and you're successful, we'll then forward you on to a representative at PRS and they'll talk to you about joining and that sort of stuff. So as you can say, maybe you're not a member yet. And then you're ready to go. So that's that. So if we go back to the summary. This part is really just your general details, what your name is, where you're based. So we want to know what part of the UK you're in. We also ask where you are originally from, so which might be international. So this part, this question is not part of the assessment process and the assessors don't actually see this either. It's just for our records because we want to know the movement of people, particularly people moving into London from the regions of the UK and whether people still feel like they need to do that. They shouldn't have to do that. It's a big part of what we do. Um, and also we like to know that we're supporting international people who have moved to the UK as well, but that's not part of the assessment process if, and it's not used in any way to discriminate against anybody. Um, website links, all this sort of stuff. So this stuff is generally, you're just building us as an organization, a picture of you, where you are in your career. So we ask what your earnings are. Again, that's not part of the assessment process. That's for our records. And then if you're signed to any labels or anything like that. We can't fund anyone signed to a major, obviously, because they have more money than we do and they don't need our help. Um, so only independent artists. And then a little reference about you as an artist from any kind of industry professional. So Yao could do that for you. Or you can just point us to a blog or something, any kind of, something to show that you are an active 
artist, essentially. That go that's going back to that 18 month track record where you can show us that you are actually doing stuff um, in music. And asking if you've applied before, that sort of thing. So most of these parts on this section are just drop down menus and it's kind of quick to, to run through and it's all for us. One of the reasons we like to know how much you're earning is because then if, if say you get this open fund and five years later you get the momentum fund, we can then see how much your earnings have rose that allows us to get more money to do what we do. So it's, this is all for us, not really for the assessment process. So that's that section done. And then this is kind of a continuation of that really, where you're just talking about what the project is. This is where the assessing will, will actually really start from, like what your, yeah, what your project is, what your actual budget is, what you're asking us for. This will obviously have to match what is in the budget in the next section. And then here's the genres. We have a top level genre list, which is not very descriptive, but this is what we need to report back to our own funders. So you might find that what you want to call yourself is not actually in here. Say, you know, you've got rock here, but not metal. You might prefer to say metal but it's not there. So you choose rock because that's the most relevant to you and then metal would be in here or hip hop, drill or whatever it is you want to do. Um, this second genre list is the one we use to make sure you're being assessed by someone relevant to what you do. So, so this is the one that's really important. If for whatever reason we don't have the correct genre in here, you can email us and say, I, this genre is missing, this is what I do, can you add that? And then we just add it in and we find someone suitable to assess it. It has to be a specific descriptive genre, not like a press release explanation of what your music sounds like. It has to be really like descriptive of what, what it is. And then we just ask a question about whether it's gonna be in music um, for film, TV, games. Again, this is not a deal breaker, it's just we'd like to know if we're funding music specifically for games because we don't get a lot of applications for that. So it's this is not a make or break question at all. And then a description of 25 words of what you want to do. Showcase performance to launch an album. Main focus of it and where it is, all this sort of stuff. So again, mostly drop down menus, not too much in there. Um, these are the two music examples we asked for. So again, this is the 50% of the score on your application is just based on what you put here. Um, if you're asking us to make an EP, say, it's better for us to see a demo of what you want to do rather than something you might have released two years ago. Because the assessors, they're not gonna mark it down because it doesn't sound as good as something that's mixed and mastered. They want to see where you're going with this new project. How has this developed from what you released before? Can you see the potential and how this is gonna be a big deal for the artist? So demos are absolutely fine and welcome if you don't have those if you, at that stage or if you're asking us to help you do demos, then of course you would use something you've previously used. But this is, yeah, 50% of the score. If you prefer to use a YouTube video of performance, you think that gets the point across better, that's absolutely fine. But it has to be a direct link to a streamable piece of specific music. So not a playlist or a whole album, like pick a track that you want. Because assessors might have, you know, in any given round, I think the last round we had 250 applications for this one grant scheme. They're not gonna listen to 250 albums. They're gonna to listen to a track. So make sure it's easy for them to get to it. Because if they have to search around too much, they might not be able to get as, as good a reading of what you're trying to do. And it means that you are directing them to what you think is the strongest track rather than them having a guess and finding something that might not be as strong. Um, so that's good. <clears throat> and so yeah, that's 50% of the score done already. And then this section here, which is next, is the main part of the application. This is the most important part. This is where you have to do some writing, unfortunately. There's no drop down menus here. So it goes back to the funding priorities that I talked about earlier. You can talk about, you can do it in a written or a video application. If we stick, to, you get the same questions and we give a little time frame. It has to be less than four minutes if it's a video. Um, but generally, this first question, level of success, one to two key achievements. That is literally all it can be. We don't need loads. But this is about putting into context where you are in your career, what you've done so far, which allows the assessors to see when you go on to talk about what you want to do, how is that going to benefit? Is this a level up? Are they pushing themselves? Are you developing creatively? That sort of stuff. So this can be really, like I say, bullet points is fine. I did this tour with this person. I've been played all over BBC Introducing. Done. 
And then... Go back to the priorities. Yeah. Army, all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're looking for really, really all of those priorities is, is what we're looking to find. And each question kind of addresses each one, really. So there's only four main questions. They do have a word limit, 200 words max. That's not a target. You don't have to hit that amount if you're not if you haven't written that much. As long as you've got, like I said, the detail, the specifics of what you want to do, that's really what we're looking for. Um, so, what activity would you like to fund, and why does this need funding support? So, we are a charity, so we're here to support people who need help. So, you need to explain why you need us to help you fund this project and what it is you're looking to do. Um, and again. It doesn't have to be loads of waffle. Don't have to write it like a press release, like you're overselling what you're trying to do to get people involved. Just the detail of the work that you're doing is what we're looking for. And then the, th the third question is, how will this project develop you creatively or professionally? It can be one or the other. So if it's purely, say, you're going into a studio to work with people who are at a much higher level than you are, you've never had the opportunity to do it before, you're not sure where the music's going to go, but creatively this is a real good opportunity for you that's fine or professionally if you like um, made this record a label's interested we need to get this record done to get the label in fine perfect if it's both that's maybe a stronger application but it can be one or the other it's it's just about highlighting in this question why this particular project is going to have such a significant impact on your career and then why is the right time? So timing is really key, and it, that goes back to like being at the right level for this particular grant scheme, making sure you are applying at the right level, not applying for momentum too early, or, and also not applying for the open fund when you might be at momentum level. So this is where you can really think about why is now the right time to be funding you? Why is it crucial to get this support now? And then how you plan to reach your audiences this is probably the question where most applications fall down on, and that's probably more to do with uh, in funding or in the funding world, the Arts Council is the biggest funder, and, and their audience question is about developing audiences in a region. So we get a lot of things which are about how you're reaching a particular community for their benefit, or, or maybe there isn't a lot of this kind of music in your area this is gonna be a great benefit for people to access this kind of support. That's not what we're looking for here. It's about how does this audience benefit you? How are you engaging this audience to help monetize the work you're doing, help you build a career in music? So it's always all about you as the music creator, as the center of the application. And I think sometimes this question, we've tried rewording it many times. Sometimes this question is answered in a slightly off way that doesn't make sense for us. So try and be quite selfish about it. Just this application is just about you and your benefit only. Um, and that's actually the bulk of the application. This one page is where the decision will or won't be made. Everything else is more for our records and just building an understanding of who you are as an artist. This is the activity section. We keep it to six just because we don't need to see a huge, huge amount of detail. It's just where you put in what the first part of your project is, when it starts, and what it is. These descriptions don't have a word. Oh, they have 15 now. They shouldn't have a word count. Um, so you can kind of explain uh, exactly what's going on. Um, so this might be your mixing stage, your mastering stage, release plan stage, your first show, that sort of thing. So just breaking down the steps and how long this project is going to take. And as I mentioned before, that is not set in stone. If things have to change, that's fine. It's just that you're you're giving the assessors a solid vision of how you see this project panning out over time. And then the section everybody hates is the budget. We have a video here of how to specifically do our budget if you're not keen on doing budgets um, and some guidance notes as well. But here is where you're just telling us, oh, so yeah, there's no word count here. So here you're telling us how, many, how much you're paying music creator fees, if that's you, how much you're paying yourself, any session musicians, recording costs. You don't have to fill in each one. If it's not relevant to you, you can leave it blank. Um, but this description, if you say you're asking 200 pounds for music creator fees and there's two of you, make sure you break that down to like musician, if I can type one, at 100 pounds, musician two, uh, 200 pounds. So, so these broad 
amounts for each section, you should break it down in here as to where that's going. And again, that's one of the main reasons many applications aren't supported, is because we might have in a panel five applications that we really want to fund, but only enough budget left to support one. And it's this kind of detail that gives the assessor a reason to fund one over the other. So explaining exactly where the money is going is really helpful to see the viability of the project, that you've really thought about it, and that it gives them more of a sense that this is definitely going to happen because I feel like this person knows what they're doing. Um, it's just sort of making them, it, it makes them feel like it's a little less risky. Um, and there's a little bit of guidance in there on things like how much your contingency can be and all that sort of stuff. And then you have your income section, so that can be... Uh, unconfirmed if this is what you think you'll make with an EP you're making, or confirmed if it's previous, what you've maybe you've earned on your last release. Um, either either doesn't matter. But essentially, the total, this 200 pounds here, has to balance with what's in this income. So yeah, you're paying your musicians 200 pounds each. You think you're gonna make 200 pounds from the recording. Sorry for my bad typing. And now you'll see that that 200 pounds there is balanced. So that's, that's a balanced budget. These both say zero, that's all fine. If you put 100 in, so there's 100 out, you'll get this message that says this does not balance. So you just have to make sure that the expenditure is equal to the income. So there's a little bit of boring maths involved. The video explains it much better than that. So yeah, you can keep going back and forth if that's an issue. Um, but the real key here, I think, is this description box section where you're explaining where the money's going. That's what's gonna make a difference. And then the final section is, uh, oh no, we don't use that anymore. I forget about that. I'll be gone. Is this monitoring section where we ask protected characteristics questions, ethnicity, age, sex, orientation, that sort of stuff. Assessors won't see this, and it's anonymized after the application process. We put all the data together from all the grant schemes, and it allows us to see where our funding is and is not going. So we can see there's a gap. Okay, we, there's a gap here. We need to go and plug that gap, and we come up with a way of doing that. That's a, a big part of what we do, is finding those gaps in the talent development pipeline and plugging them. There is always a prefer not to say option if you don't want to answer the question, and that's absolutely fine, but it really does help us understand where our money is going if you do fill it out. And it, as I say, it won't be seen by assessors. It's not part of the assessment process. And there's questions in there about socioeconomic background and all sorts. Um, so yeah, that main page of the four questions, that's the only time you really have to do a bit of writing. Mostly it is drop down menus and then budgets. So that is the form. Does anyone have any questions there? Yeah. No, it's literally just what's happening. So say you're going on a five date tour, just each date of that tour, where the venue is, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't have to be all six either. Yeah. It could be whatever it is, but it's just showing the a bit more detail about when things are happening in this particular project. Cool. Any other questions? Um, yeah. you, you, as part of the point, part of it is to bring um, artists over from different countries or something like that. Good question. Um, we, we can fund that kind of project, but we can't fund them directly. So you would need to find other money to support that aspect of it, I think. If, um, we can pay them for the work they're doing when they're here, but it's difficult for us to pay for flights and visas and accommodation for people coming over, yeah. and, they, and, and the price can go up quite significantly. Yeah. But if you've got other organisations involved in the project, that is a kind of project we can support. And a lot of the organisations funding that we do, um, quite a bit of that is exactly that. Like they, the organisation will pay to bring in people from around the world, and then they'll come to us for the funds to pay the UK artists to work with them it's a very clear development opportunity to work with people around the world. Um, so we do a bit of that. But our funding as a charity is really directly for UK-based music creators only. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? I would say, as we went through the presentation, there is a lot of grants, and it is confusing. If you want, I'm sticking around afterwards, so if you want to chat about what you do specifically and what you should be doing, then come say hello and we can talk and I can point you in the right direction. Cool. Oh, yeah, sure. 
if I can find it. I've got to run through it all, I think. There you go. Cool. Just pictures. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. I can I can probably send that to you as well if you want. So the question will be about for a bit. Um, we're a little bit behind time, a little bit behind time. So rather than we break now, I think we'll go the energizer and Tash you on to do a session. <laughs> Are you if you're ready, are you good? I'm ready, but I wouldn't say energizer. Energizer. <laughs> Right? Um, I've known Tasha for a long, long, long time, and she's an expert at helping artists with columns and marketing themselves. And I know certain people who work with have met before, that's been a big challenge of how we market myself, how we work, let people know with USB, how can I do stuff that will actually make people recognize me in the midst of loads of options and choices. So Tasha's um, session is going to be more about that.